Hi, in this last video on CSS in JavaFX, I'm going to look at how we can use Google Fonts. You can probably see in my background, there's a web page called fonts.google.com, and there's a really a lot of cool uh, fonts in here. So you can see here, there's tons of cool fonts. And if you want something really cool, you should know about cat font categories. So right now, everything is here monospace. That means something that looks like a typewriter. Let me show you. Because uh, all, all letters in this um, font has the same size uh, in the vertical direction. So these are called monospace fonts because they are all the same size, like the old uh, typewriter. Then of course handwriting is is pretty cool. Uh, looks more or less like handwriting, and actually some of these have some uh, programming into it so that they will actually not be similar uh, all of the um, uh, fonts. So, and then something you should know that serif means that there are these kind of like it creates a line here and here, making them a bit easier to read sometimes. So there's these small things here and here and here, which are called serifs. And these are the ones. So these are all, these look a bit, I think, a bit more old school than the others because they they look like something they that was on typewriters in the old days. And then there's the opposite in French, sans. it means without. So that is all the text that doesn't have that. So the most of it will probably be in here of what you want to find. So especially display is cool. Display means like fonts for uh, signs and headlines and stuff like that. So I, let, let's go for one of these because this is pretty, I think this is something that will make the biggest impact. This looks like uh, old school computer games like Monkey Island. Yeah. And this looks like something from um, an old cartoon magazine, something like that. Pretty, pretty cool, all of these. But let's try to just take one of them. Like, uh, let's see what looks the coolest. I think. Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah, this looks like, yeah, I'll, I'll go for this one. Reminds me, wow, there's also some Japanese signs here. Okay, almost before we knew it, we had left the ground. And you can even try to type your own text, like press this button and see what it actually looks like. And you can try out different sizes of this, what does it look like, and so forth. And you can click select the style and you can download it to your computer. So, so what we would want to do is we would want to have a link for this. So let's just go for select the style. And now we actually get something out here. So this is regular, it says 400. Um, that has to do with the weight, I think. And then this is the example with a link when you're using it on a web page. So what you should do, you should go for the import one. And then we're going to copy the stuff that's in here. Let's, we might as well copy everything. And what we'll do, we'll go into IntelliJ, into our CSS file here, and we would put it at the top. And we don't need style because that is only for embedding it in another page. Like if we could put it directly in the FXML file. So we just need to do something like this, where we say URL, and then we put this uh, code here. So that means that it will try to fetch this from the Google font API uh, uh, web page. So the next thing we need to do after importing it is we need to use it. So maybe if I put it directly on the anchor pane, all the text in our application should switch to this. And what to write here, so we can even get help for that. So CSS rules to specify. I copy this part. This is the CSS to actually specify to use it. And 
I can then go in here and do like that. And here we see there's some kind of difference because if I run this, see if we can do that, we can see nothing actually changed. And the reason is there's nothing called font family in FX. So if we're lucky, it's called FX font family. Yes, it is. So we'll just have to use FX font family instead. So we need to do that small change because it's uh, Java FX CSS. That's what it's looking for. And now we can see everything in here is all of a sudden it changed into this, except for the buttons. And why is that? That is actually because I defined all buttons to use Cambria and not this one. Yeah, so it's pretty easy if you know how to do it. You import the URL up here and you do like that. And you can do the same. Um, you can go for having, instead of importing uh, the URL like that, you can also load it from the disk. I, I won't show that in this video, but you can do that. Um, you can also go for, for example, FX uh, background image. And then you can put an, a background image in here and you want to specify that with URL. And now I have some pre something prepared here, like a cat image, just to show you another way of, um, okay. Couldn't load that image. Let me, let me just check it, swap. I'll just swap it, swap it around with another image from the web. The other one was probably removed. So now you see I have a cool cat image in the background here. Ah, so yeah, and you can see right now it's kind of tiled in this direction. I cannot make it any bigger. Yeah, I can. So it's kind of tiled. You can set that up as well if you want to. You can make the image larger and smaller and all of this stuff. But it wasn't to show you that you can put an image in the background. It's more to show you that you can actually load things directly from the web if you want to, and you can host your own background images on your own server. So if you deployed this program to real people, you could easily just switch around the backgrounds each day or something like that. Or um, yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah, that's it for um, JavaFX and using Google Fonts with that.